Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just explore a very interesting architecture choice which Reddit took, problems it faced on one of the biggest, I think it's a nice project from Reddit, not sure if the biggest one, biggest April Fool's project Reddit has ever done. But what this was is that a new subreddit r slash place was created. If you were active on Reddit, you would have seen that you could actually, this was a shared canvas across the whole reddit community so you could have basically drawn anything everything over here or as a pixel value so you could place pixels which would be broadcasted and shared with every single person on the reddit community and this was this was pretty cool right as a project but obviously as a project as something which is fully custom this was made possible by developers which this was made possible by people designing the architecture and that is what this blog post is about how the developers built this R place shared canvas, real time shared canvas with a lot of pixels. So let's understand. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So R place was an experiment which was also conducted in 2017, which involved, you know, the same thing more or less. But in 2022, that is this year, a reboot of that would was announced so last time this was the final picture for our place but this time it was much more organized and much more art was there so let's understand how this was all of this was constructed and came to be there so you see they start right off from thousand by thousand that's a million pixels they want to support at least a hundred thousand concurrent users and they have certain limits in mind so the back-end details the back-end implementation the first thing which they went with is the database approach where you would store the the colors or the pixels inside the database as a database row but we all know that databases are not the best choice if you have a huge amount of read and writes happening on a particular memory or a data set right in those cases it's much more better to rely on solutions like in-memory databases which is redis for example so they started off with the cassandra as you know storing one row and a i think a million columns i don't know i have read over here that they stored yeah a single row with 1 million columns which is obviously does not sound very nice in terms of performance the production cluster took up to 30 seconds which is obviously you would not want to wait 30 seconds for a response to come back so they decided to shift it on redis now the good thing about redis is that it is in memory and it is very fast almost as fast as accessing data from ram directly but at the same time this was you know going to handle heavy traffic this was going to handle a lot of users so you would want to have some sort of protection or some sort of caching or global caching in front of your main infrastructure also because this redis was not an isolated instance this was probably shared with the whole reddit website so they were using fastly as the cdn simple to implement and cache is closer to the users so that's fine and they were also using stale while revalidate now if you have been following code dam if you have been following web development a bit you know about swr stale while revalidate nextjs uses it a lot of websites uses it which is the practice of revalidating the data sending the old data which is you know out of date to the user but at the end in the background refreshing the data and then sending the new data whenever it is available to new requests or new users right similarly it says that it does two things the first thing it did was it, it maintained a cache with fastly the cdn cache over here and the second thing it did was broadcast all the real-time changes to all the connected clients right so the way this works is let's say you land on this page right r slash place the first thing your browser would do is it would try to get the board first right this image of the board so when you hit this request it'll hit the cdn the fastly cdn over here before it goes to the redis owned by reddit and if the cache is available over here then the cdn would return it if the cache is out of sync or is stale fastly would still return it back why because they are using stale while revalidate cache control header so that means at max if this is configured for one second of stale while revalidation, that is in every single second, this would become stale. Then if Fastly has 33 CDNs, that is, you know, Fastly maintains around 33 point of, I don't know what the POP is, <laughs> point of something. But if now Fastly has obviously more CDNs, this blog post is probably 
from 2017 but the similar architecture could be established for uh, 2022 version as well let's see i mean we could have a count here but i don't know like it, it probably would be more than 33 now so anyway the point is that if fastly has 33 such cdn services around the world or let's say 50 or let's say 100 and you have one second of stale while revalidate configured you can run numbers and see that at most fastly's front end would make at most 33 or 50 or 100 how many fastly servers are there in the world request per second that's all so you could have a billion people over here using fastly would have to handle and absorb all the traffic from them if it is configured right and this would only send you 33 requests per second you can have a billion requests coming in from clients this will only send you 33 of them why because it only needs to update its own nodes and then rest of the traffic is handled by the cdn over here and one second of latency should probably be fine with an application like this you know that's that's the call which they made so that's fine but this is this is an architecture which is highly scalable because you technically have just offloaded the responsibility to another provider that is the cdn over here in this case and they know how to do their jobs they know how to manage terabytes and petabytes of traffic so you can rely on them hopefully so you can see some proof points that they were able to show that hey that fastly never really exceeded 33 requests per second that means it's a it's a nice implementation and they are handling it on their own then the second problem is that how do you broadcast the drawing change right how do you broadcast the change when somebody has tapped on the screen or done some sort of work on that so for that you the reddit people the developers over here decided this architecture over here where they make the request through a WebSocket service and it broadcast that change to all the connected clients. So they store the response first, obviously, but they also broadcast the changes to all the connected clients. And Reddit again mentions that we did have a, a infrastructure which automatically can, uh, not automatically, they did have an infrastructure of WebSocket connections which allowed people to chat, for example, or, you know, just reflect upward statuses and comments and so on. So they were able to reuse that but they mentioned that you know it received a good amount of usage as well when our place was up so this part was also implemented in a similar fashion so you could see that they did try to implement a cooldown period that means you cannot just fire off a billion request of drawing uh, something and just overwriting the full board because obviously somebody would have done that if that was the case you cannot just draw on the whole board at a single go there's a there's a specific cooldown period you have to be in before you can do that okay so that makes sense and uh, yeah i mean this is this is again their proof point of how much requests they were receiving which is again interesting to see they had certain numbers in mind maximum rate of 333 requests per second that did not exceed so the maximum they got was around 200 to 50 requests per second so that's again within their limits of design whatever they considered that as and uh, yeah i mean rest of the stuff is easy i think i think the biggest problems and, and the reason i say that is easy because they already had infrastructure for web sockets for example or they had the infrastructure and you know the functionality of a subreddit or reddit sort of like that but the harder bits was to implement that fastly read thing and these write things properly that this write happens properly there is no race conditions there is nothing as such and so on so that is back end that is infrastructure in one go Frontend is whole another story how frontend is implemented. They used Canvas API, they did all sorts of, you know, Canvas manipulation, then they also had maps and stuff. So maybe frontend is something which we can discuss in some other time, at some other time, because this is again, this, this is more of implementation and design part of things. Backend and architecture is more kind of like, you know, keeping in seen that how much traffic you are about to be hit with so that thing excites me this thing also excites me but this is more like a single person view this is zoomed in a lot if you zoom out a lot and if you see the whole world using reddit our place at that time that is what is really exciting to see how people are able to handle a lot of traffic at scale so obviously they had their own problems as well along the way they misjudged a few things and so on so yeah that's basically it pretty interesting story pretty interesting architecture and and one of the things which i have seen again and again 
if if you want to learn anything from this is that the way to build real time scalable applications is to have more or less you know real time scalable architecture where real time is okay if you have a few milliseconds or few seconds of delay that that's what i mean not the chat applications and stuff like that in that case this architecture is very easy and very effective right versal uses this architecture reddit used it and this uh, you know remix uses this architecture for stale while revalidate and having a cdn in front of yourself so yeah i mean one thing if you want to take away is this architecture and of course the fact that they were able to also implement a lot more other things so yep that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you like this that is all for this one if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching